What's up you guys, it's Jay Carnas. You've seen Finding Nemo, right? Of course you have. Who hasn't? I'm gonna paint the main characters from Finding Nemo, but I'm gonna do the real life version. I'm gonna do the clownfish and the blue tang. So, yeah. Let's get some acrylic paint, my paint brushes, and a canvas panel, and let's get started. I'm laying down a color for the background. In this case, since it's under the water, I'm gonna do blues and greens. After that's done, I'm sketching in the overall shape of the fish straight on with the paint, filling it in with its main color. Doing this will not be exact when it comes to the proportions though. For example, here with Dory, you can tell it's too big, so I'll need to adjust that later. Once the main colors are down, I can begin blocking in, laying down its darks and lights and defining the fish more with shapes and colors. Nothing too detailed yet, just blocking in. If you notice, when you're working wet paint on wet paint, the color that you're laying down picks up the one that's underneath. For example, right here when I'm putting down the white, it's picking up the orange. When you're blocking in, it's not that big of a deal, you know, because you're just laying down colors and shapes. But when you're doing details, you want to avoid this unless you want that effect. That's why I jump around the painting. It gives that one spot a chance to dry before I apply more paint. Here I'm cutting in with the light blue because like I mentioned I made the blue tang aka dory a bit too big so I need to adjust it. Then I can take the same approach like I did before and define the fish using shapes and colors. Yellow is a very transparent color, so I'll need to do multiple layers to get it how I want. So I jump back and forth between the light and the dark blues while I give the yellow some time to dry. It makes the layering of the yellow a bit easier. If I don't wait for it to dry, I'm just pushing yellow paint around. There's a lot of different shades of blue in the blue tank, so I have to work that in while the rest of the paint dries. Like I mentioned, when the yellow dries, it's easier to layer. So for example here, I can go back in and work in the lighter yellows. And as the fish takes form, I can cut in with the ocean color and shape it up a little more. And now I'll set this aside, let it dry. Now that the blocking in is done, I can switch over to the clownfish part of the painting and I can get more detailed, defining the fish more with tighter brush strokes and more accurate colors. There's a lot of yellows, oranges, and reds in the clownfish, so I have to play around with it until I get the right shades of colors. For the background, I didn't want to leave it blue, so I'm adding a little coral reef looking environment at the bottom, extending through both canvas. I'll define and adjust it a little bit more when it dries. While the rest of the painting dries, I'm going to make this water brighter. If you like what you've seen so far, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And now after the blocking in, and I guess you'd say the second stage of blocking in, where you get tighter with your shapes and a little more accurate with your colors, this is where I pull out my Princeton Select brushes and I begin the real details. 
This is where I put in all the highlights and all the darkest spots. This is where I put in all the nice tight edges. And this is where the painting really starts to pop. The Princeton Spotter Petite brushes are my favorite when it comes to adding these little like tiny details. Like for example around the fins or the eyes. They work very very well adding little highlights too. I'll have affiliate links to Blick Art Materials in the description if you're interested in getting any of the materials that I use. For the shadow on the clownfish, I'm using a dark reddish orange. For the highlights, I'm using a really light yellow. The blue tang has this really light blue on the top, kind of goes from the top of the eye to the back to the tail. To get kind of those like freckles, I used a messed up brush and I just dabbed a little bit of the black paint to make it look a little more natural instead of strategically laying down dots. So the bottom here with the reef looks pretty cool, but I want these two paintings to flow into each other. So here on the right canvas, I'm going to add some orange to balance out with the clownfish on the other canvas. And I'll have the purple corals kind of flow in a bit. And then on the canvas with the clownfish, I'll bring a bit of the green in behind the purple. And that way it kind of like flows into each other. Towards the back of the reef, I'm going to make these like rock-like shapes to give it depth. And to get that effect, I'm going to be using darker shades of the blue that I'm using for the ocean. Some final touches and we're ready for the final shots. I think it came out awesome. They look fantastic together. They also look awesome by themselves. So I'm super excited. I love them. I hope you did too. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website, uh, jcardinalsart.com. I have t-shirts like this one. I have prints, stickers, original artwork, including the fish. They will only be sold together. So if you're looking at this video right now, they are available. They're up on my website. Go ahead and check that out. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next video.